and y'all I'm making king moves like chess plays All my homies we be sipping, you see life is lovely Need that energy of greatness that's surrounded by me Been feeling like my class is half full, thirsty in the worst way Haters playing the trash, my weekend it is just a Monday Sorry that we win and constantly come in in first place I, I, I must add it just cause everybody seem to concentrate OMG, now they seem to notice me Back when I was pumping gas just to get a dollar T Call us Dirty Clifton Chair, yeah. now we are so fresh, so clean This big boy and now cast, but we counting all his stacks by three For sure though, the slowdown's a no-go Hey folks, shine You guys are going to participate in an activity that we like to engage in Which is about recognition Recognizing who the friend is it's about looking at each other and understanding who we are So the way to do that is through interpretation, right? Interpretation of your pen and your eyes, and you cannot lift up your pen or pencil, whatever utensil you choose. I think there's enough of y'all six of y'all. Right? Well, eight. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we we'll give you guys about one minute. To, oh gosh, Cody is generous. He's like, I'm gonna give y'all three minutes. I'm like, yo, y'all get one minute. <laughs> All right, sometimes just draw me a here, bro. Dreams, 
he was always on 10, making you feel a little bit uncomfortable how on 10 he was. <laughs> Whatever um, may hinder you at being your full self with this group, um, please bring your full self to this group. Bring your energy, your joy, um, your sadness, if that's where, where you're at on any given day, and, and let this flow be a community and a family. It's Tom, um, I'm one half, happy return with coding. Do a little, I'll do a little. Okay. Uh, what, what type team? Say a little. Um, I don't know how far we are back. I mean, Cody and I have known each other since what, 2015? Really? So, not a long, long time, but quite a while. Yeah. Okay. And um, we, you know, back in, I think, 2020, uh, we moved into the place, most place, like down in the corner where we're at, where you folks do some work and we'll see what we're up to. And we, I think, yeah, we just sort of, like, we sort of knew what we kind of wanted to do. Like, you know, Cody was coming in with all of this sort of plastic knowledge and kind of robotics, and I was coming in with, like, experience as an artist, and I like, doing a lot of the printing and kind of, like, digital, digital work and sculpture and stuff. And so we just kind of had a sense we wanted to work together and, what what would happen? Uh, a lot of people like assume that I really always know what I'm doing, but it's kind of that fake it you make it, you know? Like you get down to like give something a shot and just you put the time in to research it. Most of the things you're gonna see in our studio, like there's a few like 3D printing like I learned in school, but like most of that stuff I've learned on the internet. Um, and it was just put in time to figure that out. Um, Tom was a joke that a tool collector. That you'll see there's some big heavy tools in there, and a big thing when I acquire these tools is also learning how to work with them safely before we even use it because these are industrial tools that we're working with, and uh, it can be a little scary, a little overwhelming. But the big thing is like uh, I've learned to say we're all learning through this, and I don't think I don't like to use the word masters ever because mm -hmm. nobody is master. We're always learning. You're always learning your craft. And uh, we're going to be uh, working with a lot of different processes. And sometimes I like to admit, like, I don't always know everything. Like, yeah. Like, you might know something I know. And, like, you, it's a feedback loop. We're all going to be teaching each other and learning throughout this whole process, both with plastics, with communication, logistics. Uh, I'm very distracted. If you ever say something, <laughs> please. Uh, and I'm all going to learn. And you're going to be teaching me, and I'm going right. to teach you. And this isn't just like this hierarchy. So, yeah. I want to bring that to this, that this is like we're all learning it together and uh, yeah, just communicating and keeping each other in the loop. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, um, hey. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Earth Art Foundation had this opportunity for the Earth Art Grant. Shout out Grant. Yep. And uh, we're like, we need to apply to this. And we were all super busy, stressed out with other projects, but yeah. we still made time each week to like put this opportunity together to apply for it, just to see. Because we're gonna do it no matter what. Right. We'd be here, but it was nice to have this opportunity. And to co-create and collaborate. It's just like, a good opportunity. Like, well, mom did it when she was younger, so I learned because I was a kid. And I am very obsessed with recycling because I love nature, right? Yeah. And when I was a kid, it wasn't, well, the shores were not full of plastic and trash, and now they are. And so mm. this big concern of how do I, how do I make it more beautiful, and how do I get people to care? And if the big corporations won't take an active role in um, rehabbing what they've put on, we have to take grassroots initiative, right? Yeah. And so how do we repurpose fabrics from clothing that's just ending up at thrift stores or, or thrown out from thrift stores because it can't be used? How can we utilize things like this that, that would just go into the trash, sure, right? Yeah, so the local yes. coffee shop is donating. I think this is a much better choice than purchasing pre-made plastic bins. Yeah. And we get to reuse because the best part of recycling is reduce, reuse, recycle. So we're, we're reusing. Make it full circle. Like how can we redeem this item, this object that we see so much of, but give it another life cycle. And so from loads of fun, we've been collecting a specific type of plastic. Anybody know what kind of plastic this is? The yellow plastic. Okay. <laughs> number two or number five? 
Number R? Yeah. <laughs> Take a guess. So I'll say that there's one out of there's one of seven. So out of the one and seven, what number is this plastic right here? Then? There you go. Two. Uh, so number five is the most common plastic on earth. Polypropylene. And number two is the stuff we're really looking for. HDPE. Yeah, HDPE. So right before you guys is actually the process that we undergo with redemptive plastics. So literally we collect it. And you guys did the interviews, right? Because some of y'all were like, hey, I want to collect, I want to shred, I want to do this. So give a rundown of what things that you were interested in so everybody can hear. So what were you interested in? Oh, I was yeah. interested in all of them. Always. Some collecting, collecting. So this part. Collecting and cleaning. Collecting and cleaning. It's a big, big part. I said everything. Thanks. Marcus said just paint me a job. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons why we've been like specifically choosing laundry mats is because we know that the material that was held inside these containers is more than likely laundry detergent and not some other thing. Toxic. Yeah, some, you know, yeah. stuff. So picking it off the ground is a little, yeah, it's a little bit more risky in terms of like cleaning and all that jazz. And so we know where the source is, we know exactly what was in here. So it just helps out with that cleaning process. But from there, we take it to the shredding process. So we collect the plastic, we clean it, and sometimes we even break it down. So we'll cut it like this with the trash can lid. So we'll just break it down by cutting it so that it can go into what we have in the shredder. So right now, what Chris is looking at is, you can hold that up for everybody. So we guys, we're gonna take you guys to the other studio to see, but we have a, a shredding machine that breaks, and, breaks down into like small little fibers that we can use. We're gonna grab the lumber right there. So this is one of these buckets. Yeah, a bag like this full, we go in the shred and gets into this. So it's like deceiving. You think, oh, I got a lot of plastic, and it becomes like a bucket. Yeah, no and then this bucket, it gets, like everything in it gets melted and turned into one six foot long two by three. Switch to other methods, but that seems to be a good methodology for now. And yeah, it's always good to test things out, you know? Because like, I mean, you learn a lot by practicing. I like this this thing here is a rehearsal. You know, as soon as I made that, I jumped on it and jumped up and down on it, and <laughs> sat on it, and danced on it. You need to see that video. You know, if you're a dancer, this is the choreography for the rehearsal. If you don't, right, freeze out. So this is the practice oh, one. It's not super pretty, right? It's you know, I cracked the wood in a bunch of different places, I glued it up. You know, it was done in a bit of a rush. We call that care. Just like sure. fish that we have happily made out of uh, the lumber, so right over there. So I you guys can do the honors that's here. Before we mentioned to you guys, like when we were speaking, this idea of conceptualize, create, critique, right? So a lot of this started within the first forms of like conceptualize, you draft and like that. And then we create the maquette, right? That's what that is. We go through the process of creation. And then we create. Y'all can call out. Ooh. Ooh. This is the actual bench that we created. And you already were sitting on those four of you guys. Literally <laughs> sitting on y'all the first four people that have ever yeah. sat on yeah. that bench. And didn't even know. Like y'all tested. I was like, yo, I was like, I was just like, yo, the one who was sitting on there. That to see some of the subtle differences, like the end caps we kind of changed, we put these little fillers in. There's some um, cool moments here in the plastic, like tree rings from the process that were like, let's highlight that a little bit so you can see some of those cores and stuff. Right, and then we're talking about color options as well. We don't want to come up with everything. We want you guys to be a part of that whole process with us. And that's what's going to make this more of a collaborative effort that you guys like give us, hey, what's the direction we should go with this, this, that, and the third, so. And so yeah, so I just want to say, I mean, one of the things I'm really excited about having you all here is just to riff off what Joan was saying. It's like, you've all got really good ideas about what to do with this stuff. Marcus is going to make a bike. Brilliant. It's my bike. Right? Over right. these weeks, you'll be able to come up with your right. own ideas. I'm like, well, what would you do right. if you're using this? Um, you know, we'll show you different artists, designers, exactly. and folks yeah. who are making stuff with plastic, who are coming up with these ideas. And, you know, going back to, uh, to what Violet said, you know, I mean, I think, you know, one of the ways we dig ourselves out from this mountain of plastic is we start redeeming it mm -hmm. and making it into a useful material. And, and, and the thing that we realized early in this grant process was, and this is where the name Redemptive Practice came from, 
was that the problem with plastic is as soon as it's done, like it's been presented to us as a material that we should throw away. The way that we should use plastic is throw it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just a massive problem. And the people that came up with that idea, that's a bad idea, <laughs> you know? somebody who's sitting on the bench. I mean, there's three people right now occupying the space. I guess it's quality control right now.